There is a lot that I could say today. Um, many, many good things. Um, but I don't have time for all of that. Um, during our three years here at Living Free, I have learned a whole lot. I've learned a lot about being a dad, learned about being a husband, learned a lot about having two kids because one came in the middle. Um, learned a lot about being a, a boy dad and a girl dad. Learned a lot about being a kids pastor. Learned a lot about being a pastor. Uh, there's many things that I learned from Pastor Ricky and Pastor Brandon and Pastor Ty and Pastor Tim that I could not all say because there's so much to say. Um, I learned a lot about your kids. Uh, they are funny <laughs> and they are smart and they are wild and they are awesome. They are awesome. Um, I learned a lot about following the Lord. I learned a lot about the Lord. Um, and there's one thing that I learned uh, from him that kind of sticks out to me that I want to share with you today. Um, and it's that, that it's that God has great love for our children. Um, not just my children, but your children and all children. And he wants us to be deeply concerned for, the, for their spiritual welfare. Um, we see this in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, Moses is um, recounting everything that happened with the, Israel, the first generation of Israelites. Um, he tells them the, the Ten Commandments, and then he gets to the greatest commandment. And it's in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Verse 6, And these words that I command to you today shall be on your heart. Verse 7, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. In verse 9, you shall write them on your doorpost of your house and on your gates. I want to focus on verse 7 uh, for a little bit, uh, diligently teach them to your children. Um, he specifically tells them, teach them the words that I say. Um, and God has placed this concern inside of us for our own children. Um, what, so what does it mean to diligently teach our, chil our chil children? Um, it means that godly training of our children should be at the foremost concern. It means it should be first. Um, he's given ch us children to steward and to prepare them. Um, spiritual instruction must be centered in the home with both the father and the mother taking part. Uh, devotion to the Lord in the home is not an option, but it's a direct command. So everything starts in the home. It's not just at church on Sunday or a Wednesday night thing. We need to do it at home. Um, and the purpose of parental instruction is to teach them to fear the Lord to walk in His ways, to love and appreciate Him, and to serve Him with all of their heart and their soul. Um, and then us as believers must diligently give our children a God-centered education where everything was related to God and His ways. Um, if you don't know how to do that, we have a great resource here at Living Free uh, with our kids' curriculum. You can There's an app you can download, and it has all of our... Uh, curriculum in there so you can see everything that's being taught to your K through fifth graders as well as your preschoolers. It has all the videos, all the music in there, um, all of the notes, as well as uh, things for you to ask them when they get home. So you can see if they've learned or pay attention. Most of the time they have. Sometimes they'll give you an answer like, oh, I don't know, but then they'll tell you later. Uh, um, and so it's a great resource. And if you don't ha have there's other things than that, and you can talk to Pastor Ty about those. He'll get you all of those. Um, but the fact that God specifically tells them to teach our children is very important. Um, and so when we get to uh, the book of Joshua a little bit later, um, we see God reiterate this concern for their children again. Um, Joshua chapter 4 takes place just after uh, the second generation of Israelites cross over the Jordan River into the promised land. Um, 
I find it interesting that um, the same way, the same miracle that God led the Israelites out of Egypt was the same miracle that God led them into the promised land by this spreading of water and walking across on dry ground. Um, and I want to focus here because this is a very important thing that God uh, tells the Israelites to do. And it's in Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 uh, through 3. I'm going to start there. It says, When all of the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man. So twelve men, one from each tribe. And command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly. And then bring them over with you and lay them down in the place where you will lodge tonight. Um, and so Moses tells the men this, and then, it, and then in verse 6 it picks up and it says, So that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do those stones mean? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off so that the stones shall be a people, shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. Um, so what does stone, the stones mean? So the, they grabbed stones out of the river and they built a monument. Um, and in the Old Testament, a, st- a monument of stones was frequently used to remind future generations about God's salvation and grace towards his people. Um, and I believe that we sh- can and we should have these kinds of monuments in our life. I want to talk about those in a little bit. Um, as they provide opportunities for us to inspire others and to tell others about God. Uh, but these stones in this story were a monument to provide an opportunity for the Israelite parents to teach their children about what God had done at this specific place, and specifically about God's power and His faithfulness. And we need to teach our kids about God's power, yeah. His power and His faithfulness. Um, they're very important things. Um, I want to focus on God's power for a little bit. Um, It's God's power that draws us and our children to Him. And we see this um, in the New Testament with Jesus. It was His power that people saw and heard about that caused them to believe or come see Him. Um, And I have a really cool story uh, in my life about how I experienced God's power for the very first time. Uh, When I was about 9 or 10 years old, um, me and a friend were running in our church and uh, we were racing, and he tripped, and he fell, and he shattered his elbow, his left elbow. Like, it was completely shattered. Um, it was mushy, kind of like jello. It's what it felt like. Um, and uh, it, it was very weird. And um, his dad was a doctor, so he said, well, let's sling it up for the night, and uh, we'll go in the morning to the doctor and have it checked out. And so we thought it was a great idea to for me to stay the night at his house, and so I did, and we stayed up really late. We were playing video games and having a great time, uh, but one of the things we did was we prayed for his arm, um, and I'll never forget this. We went to sleep, and we woke up in the morning, and his sling was on the other side of the room, um, and I, we w- woke up. I said, hey, dude, you should, your sling is over there, and he's like, what? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I think you need to move your arm and see if everything's okay, he can move his arm completely all around. And we ran downstairs and we showed his dad, and he's like, that's crazy. <laughs> I was like, it, it was crazy. Um, and so he's like, well, everything's fine. We're not going to go to the doctor. And so um, that moment in my life was the first time that I experienced God's power. And it caused me to believe that God is real and God does miracles and what comes next. Um, and I'll never forget that. And I tell the kids in the back the story all the time because it's so important to me. And they're like, we've heard this story before. I'm like, yeah, I know, but it's important. You need to know. Um, so it's his power that draws us to him. Um, and our kids need to know about his power. Um, we also need to teach our kids about his faithfulness. Um, when we and our children see God's faithfulness, it keeps us close to Him, and it keeps us following Him. Um, It builds our faith. Uh, It helps us to have faith for the next thing that may come our way. 
Uh, it keeps us following, like I said, and it helps us to wait on Him when we need provision for the next thing. Um, when you know that God's going to take care of you, there's really nothing to stress about. Even though we are humans and we do stress about it, there's something inside of us that says God's going to take care of it. Um, it's when we get in the way and we try to force things that mess things up that cause us to stress. Um, so we need to teach it our children about God's power and His faithfulness. And I um, have seen God's faithfulness in more ways than I could count. Um, there's, there's so much that I could talk about, but I want to kind of talk about stones. The stones in the, that were picked up out of the Jordan River were specifically mentioned for this purpose, was so that you and your children can remember what God did. Um, and I've been kind of doing this over the years where I have kind of collected my own stones about God's faithfulness. Um, I have this little box here. This is kind of my monument. Um, it's getting a little small. It's kind of full. Um, and th- I have things from when I was a teenager that I've seen God be faithful in. I've, I've got stuff from when I was an adult, things from camp, things from churches. I got things from here where I've seen God be faithful in this box. But it's just a box. This is not meant to be an idol or an object of worship because this is not God. This is just things that God did. Um, But my job for my kids is to show them this box and to teach them about what this box means and what this box represents. Show them what's inside of the box And tell them about God's power and His faithfulness. Because if I don't diligently teach them, I'm neglecting my God-given mandate, command for my children. And it's the same for you. Um, It's our job to teach them and show them God's faithfulness. Because like I said, it's His power that draws them close And it's his faithfulness that keeps them going. So it's my job to teach them about these things. And it's also my job to grow this box. To keep picking up stones along the way. To keep following the Lord. And eventually get to the place to where they start picking up their own stones. Um, Now someone say it's probably just a bunch of junk. Because there probably is some junk in here. There's some wristbands and some cards and some things and some notes that I've written. It's, it really is just a bunch of junk, but there's meaning to the junk. Um, so, honey, I'm sorry. There's going to be some junk around the house. <laughs> and for me, I've kind of had this box hidden away. And it wasn't until I started praying and preparing for today that the Lord reminded me of it. Um, and I was like, i got to find some stuff to put in here. Um, so I found some things, and I wrote some notes. And i got to put this on display, so you have to keep me accountable. Um, but again, to not let these things become idols or objects of worship, because they're not. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen God be faithful You've seen him, you've seen his power, um, and you're like, I don't have anything physical because that may have happened a long time ago. Write a note. I have things that I have in here are written on notes. Uh, It's on a sheet of paper. Um, Things that I didn't have, but I want to remember. Um, If we're not experiencing God's power and his faithfulness in our life, then I would argue that we're probably not following him as bestly as we should Um, because when we do follow him we do see his power and his faithfulness time and time and time again Um, so what does that leave us with today Uh, one we need to follow god us as ourselves as as parents we need to follow god as spiritual parents we need to follow god Um, we have to talk to him We have to listen to him, and we have to do what he says. Um, I tell the kids all the time, it's great to pray, but if we don't listen when we pray, then we're not going to hear what he has to say. Um, We need to read our word. 
because then we get to see what his power really is. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us just like we sang this morning because then we get filled with his power and we get to carry that with us. Um, Then we need to start building monuments because it's those things that help us remember to teach our children or teach others around us about his power and his faithfulness. And then we need to teach. A couple of weeks ago in Kids Church, we were talking, uh, following up our Easter series, and we were talking about uh, Jesus and Peter. And we get to the place where Jesus tells Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, I do. And he says, well, feed my sheep. He says it three times. And as a reader, you're kind of like, okay, Jesus, he gets it. He does love you. But then if you look at it from Peter's perspective, you're like, why do you keep asking me this? You know I do. But Jesus was specifically telling him, if you love me, you need to teach my sheep. And that's what we need to do. It's our job as parents and spiritual parents and disciples to teach others about God's power and his faithfulness. Um, And to pick up stones along the way to use as things to show that physical reminders of what God did Uh, there's many things that I learned over these past three years that I could keep things from to put in this box maybe to even make the box bigger um But I'm, I'm, I'm glad for the things that I did put in the box because then I get to teach my son who doesn't need a whole lot of teaching sometimes. But I get to teach him, hey, but I guess what Pastor Ricky told me one day. Uh, m- remember when you sang that song? Uh, let me tell you what God showed me while you were doing that. Let me tell you about the time uh, Pastor Brandon showed me how to be uh, myself. Let me tell you how Pastor Tim showed me how to persevere in the midst of struggle. Let me tell you what Pastor Ty showed me about how to teach you. Just to name a few. I like this moment in Scripture because it's the start of something new. It was a chance for the Israelites to kind of get things figured out after the first generation screwed up in a way. And God was specifically telling them, put this here so you remember. There'll be others along the way, but this was the first one. I don't know where you're at today with your walk with the Lord. Maybe you've been walking for a long time. Maybe you're just starting. Maybe you feel like you're on a roller coaster ride like me. But it's exciting. And I can't imagine what went through their minds when they saw the waters of the Jordan River split 
Do they remember what their parents told them about seeing the Red Sea split? Did they know? But they set up a monument to remember what God did there for them. So I encourage you, one, to follow the Lord. Because you'll never know where you'll go. You'll never know where you'll end up. You'll never know how, how you'll see him. You'll never know about his power or his faithfulness if you don't start. Sometimes you've got to take a step of faith into the unknown. But you'll never see it if you don't go. I encourage, too, I encourage you to pick up some stones and build a monument so that you can teach your children or teach somebody about God's power and His faithfulness. And three, I encourage you to teach somebody Usually it's in that when we see God's power and his faithfulness.